Hallelujah. Can I pray for us today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh, Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you that we get to spend this time with Emmanuel, Lord, and with each other mm -hmm. uh, to dwell in your word. Father, I pray that you would give us each understanding and a longing heart to uh, be for you, Lord, and mm -hmm. through tough times, Lord, to come to you, Father. Um, I pray that you would bless today as Emmanuel teaches, and I pray that you would also bless literature class and um, our the new students that will be joining us. Father, I pray that you would give them understanding, Lord, and mm. wisdom. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Mm. Well, let me break it down. I hope you by now you're able to read Matthew 5 to 7, am I? Everybody did that? If you don't, well, you miss out on many things. So let me give you a brief breakdown about Jesus' teaching because breaking three chapters here, we often look at it with the division chapters. We don't necessarily see it's a whole conversation in a whole discourse. Um, by now, we have said we prepare three, um, three venues, if you will, to lead to this discussion. First, we uh, talk about the relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this portion of Scripture begins really, this is being introduced in relation with the Father, what it look like as a spiritual son, am I right? So we should try to introduce disciples into the second, we mentioned uh, the seven spirit, God, we need to, to have a spiritual impartation, spiritual reception. Jesus said, let those have a ear, let them hear. Therefore, you have the lesson to the spirit rather than your intellectual mind. We approach the scriptures often one of the big, big trouble in cross histories. Here represented by the Pharisaic spirit, is called the spirit of Pharisee. Um, it's basically using man's mind, and mental capacity, or intellect to approach God's law. God's law are spiritual. He tried to impart a life, a will for life, with the wisdom from above. And we try to use God's word as, like the law or other scriptures, prophecies, to, to study, to copy a life, to manufacture a life, imagine a life, based on earthly conveniences, earthly world beings, where God's requirements for righteousness can never be fulfilled by that kind of a construct to begin with. Then that construct also relate to, even religiously, with a worshipful heart, good intent, but rely more on your own strength, actually by nature's own strength, right? Your own capacity to fulfill, do certain things, become eventually a self do the don'ts. Do's and don'ts, am I? Do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. But the law and Jesus' teachings identify a different kind of life, basically a new life. You're born into a spiritual life, you rely on the spiritual nurturing with the increase in that spiritual life with you from a baby to a mature son. Then you're able to accomplish the, all the law. You think right. You'd be, not because you try to do righteous, but you just begin to think differently than natural man or colonel man would think. You, especially religious man would think, right? You interpret things differently. Well, Jesus in this, this set of teachings, mercifully, perfectly demonstrated a different way to read the law, to read Moses' law, to read God's instruction towards his, his chosen people what kind of life he, he tells them to do. Now he began to tell them to do this life. You can imagine a life in the world. We have a different relationship. And the first relation we're going to have is what? Is a vertical relationship. You worship for you. I'm taking notes now. <laughs> so, vertical relationship. And so you worship this God. It's a sovereign God. It's a living God. It's a spiritual God. The spirit, spiritual God. You can you God the Holy Spirit. How you worship him? With the religious do the don'ts, a set of rules, or you have a personal relationship with him. 
how do you define that personal relationship? Are you a slave? The slave, he's a master, you know, he's do his beatings. <coughs> angels are his servants, and his bond servants. You know, angels worship God, obviously, serve God perfectly, son. But they are still, just don't have his mind, right? Don't have his counsel. So I don't want to expound too much, basically, but eventually, this is what presented. They say, you're supposed to be his sons, his offspring. I mean, he's supposed to be a, lead, a father to you. So you know, you, you know, you, you're not more than not separated from your heavenly father when sin and the hindrance and de dealt with. You're supposed to learn how he thinks, how he does things. You are his own child, his own family, you know. So that's one set. So personal relation with God is uh, fundamentally transformed in these teachings. Okay, we're going to talk about this. The second is, there are righteous things to do. Are we totally to fulfill the laws as the law is redundant, useless, some word called obsolete, because Hebrew book mentions that. Yes, as a rule, as we worship is obsolete, but it is the requirements, it is the goodness, righteousness, the kind of orderly, peaceful, prosper life God ordained as a covenant of blessing to the people, is to be fulfilled. No, rather be fulfilled. It's a cursed way. It's the unlawful way, am I? The lawless way. The so ways without restraint, without counsel, without goodness. Those kind of things is a personal way. But you're supposed to be the right candidates for the beneficial, benef is the beneficiary in the sense, the benefit of the gospel, the blessing of the gospel, supposed landing on you. In the sense, you have to fulfill that part of the law. Amen. Hallelujah. So you have to fulfill the law rather than discard the law. Okay. You have to fulfill the prophet because the prophet is you're looking for an ideal life. Am I? That is still embodied the law, informed by the law, and blessed by the impartation of the law. So that's the second thing. So how we deal with the law? You know, so live with the law. And with the law, obviously, you're more than going to have a personal worship being elevated, identified. But the law mostly is about building a holy people, a ready people for God to present himself, live with them, am I? Because you're my people, I will be your God. So in that, in the law, you're supposed to deal with a certain kind of code of conduct. In essence, what we, how we live together as a people, barely individual. So the first set is a personal relation with God. Now God began to lay out, basically, said, how you deal with your fellow man? Amen. How you live together as his chosen people together, as a family, as God's family, as a king's man on the well and under. So then this began to talk about that. You know, then you begin talking about as you live together, how you deal with this worthy life. You're still in the world, even in order for the world, as you sell your sort part. The still thing had to do in this world. He's then talking about there are different things. They've said things in the world you need to take care of. Either earthly needs, you still have needs, amen? And like, should those needs become your burden of life? The priority of life? He said, not so, amen? Hallelujah. He said, the Father will take care of those things. If you develop a life beyond yourself, but rather people, to be a righteous kingdom, am I? Kingdom is never a person, one person. It's a people, always a people. You begin to populate, be a messenger, a kind of a, a way of life that involves a God's community people. The second thing talk about, you know, there are the evil one, am I? Still in the world, am I? He animately want to tempt you, to disrupt you, to do harm to you, how you deal with him. The temptations that ensued by him, will deceive you and led you astray, how you deal with him. Make it sense to you, you know, so. The third is more, more than just have a peace with one another. Maybe you can turn around and help one another to be a messenger of God's goodness, am I? So you can, you know, um, get, get yourself activated to be a messenger, a light unto the world, a salt unto the world. So Jesus began to describe this kind of life. He said, also give many 
in nutrition, said it's like a tree, eh? Should bear good fruits. You have good roots, so the good seed bear good fruits. And then adjust accordingly. Whether it's a don't read religious eyes, distorted man's eyes, judge with righteous eyes, wise eyes, God's standard, look at who is the right fruits, who is the bearer of right fruit, who is the right tree, who has all the right seed. The second is said, you need to learn to be disciplined, put the thing in practice, like a building a house on a solid foundation. And it said, good one, put in practice, eventually they will build a strong house, when troublesome time comes, like a storm, and beat on it shall not fall. This is Jesus' basic teaching. Now he uses his day's language, he uses the parables, he uses the context of the major religious practice that framed other Moses' law to tell them a different story, right? So in our eyes, in later days' eyes, people so religious intellectually try to understand this teaching here. Often we narrow down to one thing, you know, wow, nobody can do that, right? How in the world can do that? Then we theorize, oh yeah, it's not about the flesh, it's the spirit. All those are legit, true. But I, what I try to cast with you is some fundamentals. When you get the fundamental right, everything can be done right, right? So come with me to part of it. <coughs> um, the same book, hold on, I'm trying to find the place. The same book in 22 chapter. So in this place, Jesus speaking about uh, have a confrontation with the Pharisees and with the Sadducees. 22 chapter led to 15. 15. In 15, the beginning said, then the Pharisee went out and laid plan to trap his word. So they made some arguments and he rebuked them. Am I? That's through the coin to, to, to how to pay taxes. To what taxes? Taxes are more than taxes. It's who's the government, who's the authority you, you're going to respect. You know, who's the citizenship you will belong. Is it, am I making sense to you? So, in a sense, who's government you're going to order? So, the Pharisees had to trap him, you know, so, and Jesus said, well, you guys using the coins, the, the Caesars, you know, the Pharisees are not supposed to use the coin from the, well, from the um, Gentile world, right, it's for Caesar's coin, but they use it anyway, out of their own pocket, you know, so, <laughs> the Pharisees have to use their own coins, you know, especially talking about taxation, you know, so, <laughs> they're not supposed to pay taxes to use their own coins, that's why they're coin changers. To be changed the coins the Pharisees give to you to use for for for, for contribution to, 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 to the temple, am right? So here's a Pharisee, probably the pocket pot sees the coins. So <laughs> Jesus didn't shame him to tell you, hey, you know, here you go. You know, you don't hundred percent practice what you preach, am right? So they try to trap him. But the point is uh, Jesus uh, feed you know, feed them find the force army very easily. The next way is a more theological, actually, more important argument. The lesson 23, the same day, said, the Sadducees, and now this is more the governmental or political class in those days, the Sadducees who said there's no, no resurrection. They said no resurrection. Sadducees don't believe in angels, don't believe in the supernatural even. They don't believe in afterlife. So here Jesus said, you know, they, they crafted this, Tricky question. Obviously, how it trapped many Pharisees, right? You can see the two school argue all day long. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> nobody had, they found the right trap, right? The Pharisees don't know what to say. <laughs> this is sorry, no answer. And they tried to use the trap Jesus. <coughs> and Jesus said in 29, uh, he said, You are in error. This is one identify as the day to start. Why is he in error? There's people in error. They have the Bible, they try to explain the Bible, they try to use the Bible, or the scriptures rather, the law of the prophets, as a governing text for their authority in the civil life of the, the chosen people. You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. So let's now translate ourselves. These days, 
People talk about the power of God often, they talk about the what power of God? The miraculous working, healing power of God, whatever. That's basically modern fantasy, charismatic, and so on. You just shove a word, you don't get to agree with it. But it's the theme that will discredit certain teaching fundamentally, the misunderstanding the called the Pentecostal movement, charismatic movement. Because they continue to think the Bible is a miracle manual, miracle working manual. But that's not what Jesus tells us to do. Jesus tells us the whole set is a governmental teachers. Am I right? The teachers represent the government of the day to come to him the challenges of thinking and his attitude towards the law, towards the civil government. What Jesus tried to tell them is that you don't understand the law where you said the Bible is your authority. Oh, it's all the authority Bible. You heard some modern Christians say that? Huh? Only the Bible is the authority? Well, that's what the Pharisees believed. This is the second one. They said, that we're going to tell the of miracles of power of God. That's our verdict. We are walking in God's spirit. Am I right? Who is that modern day Christian? That's a charismatic belief. So I'm not talking about the small stuff. I try to impart some fundamentals that they all deleted what Jesus tried to say to us. Okay? They have misunderstood the scriptures and the power of God. The same still stands true today. So to you guys, maybe you have a little shock, but to your parents' generation, that is a serious shock because that's most of the Christianity out there. So let's look at this, what Jesus said to the scriptures. He said you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, misuse the scriptures, right? Misapply the scriptures. Therefore, your authority is a fake authority. <laughs> Whatever you interpret the two scriptures, you build as evidence and, and the construct for your governmental representation of God's people. It's a fake one. The second is that you don't know the power of God. Here he's talking about the mer merely miraculous power of God. He's talking about the resurrection power, am I? You will have life for angels. Sure, there is a resurrection power of the new life, but that new life is more than an uh, interesting life, everlasting life. That life is immersed into a, a kingdom, into a congregating people. By the way, this is what we're talking about this kind of power to govern angels, to govern after life, what are you talking about? Amen? Hallelujah. Yes, you will have that life, but if that life has no power, no government over it, <laughs> it's in story, right? So Jesus will talk about, no, that is the power Jesus is here, here talking about, okay? So make it sense to you. So for sure, it's the rest in power, but the rest in power is an entry way to it. It's an introduction to it. Now, then he narrowed down, he began to bring Moses a law to verify this, okay? The, so he silenced the Sadducees, the Sadducees, he began to question them. He said, you think you know the law, you know the scriptures. Let me ask you, what do you think the law is about? Where your authority came from? What kind of people are you producing if it's according to the law? You government people, you're supposed to produce a people with a culture, with understanding, right? So, in 35, let's see. One of the experts tests him with this question, teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? Which is the greatest command in the law? So this is a very good start for understand <coughs> the Sermon on the Mount, okay? 37, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, that's recorded in Moses' law, with all your soul, with all your mind. Three um, organs or three capacities of a human being. Heart, soul, mind. Heart, soul, mind. I hope you carry it to your own private setting to ask relevant people if you you know if you can answer yourself, study the three words. Do a scripture study, you know, do a search of oh, what is the Bible talking about the mind? What about the heart? What about the soul that uses it in different contexts? And God, through Moses, through Jesus, identifies those are three capacities as expression of a human being. You know, if that is so, so as you, 
be your being who you are, being who I am, then obviously you have three persons as well. Three persons. Heart. In your heart, who are you? Who are you in your soul? Because it's all personal identity thing, right? Who really presides over your soul? Who presides over your mind? Amen? Hallelujah. So you don't want to tell me somebody only uses the mind to identify, argue with me all day long about who he is in God. I said, what about your heart? He can answer that question. <laughs> that will pretty much trouble because I think his mind is not applied rightly, am I right? Because if his mind really applied rightly, the first question going to say, what is in my heart is about? Amen, hallelujah. Three, just like Godhead has come together. Amen, hallelujah. Mind, heart, soul, and mind. Now, this is the first and greatest command. Is this nullified? Is most of nullified for God's people? Or should it be fulfilled through Christ Jesus? Sermon of the Mount is exactly helpless to interpret, apply Moses' law to this effect. Amen. Jesus will talk about this law. This law of God be fulfilled individually, then in the community setting, the next one's community setting. So this is the first greatest command. And the second like this, love your neighbors. It's very important, more than the fantasy of Christianity, neighbor is a next door neighbor. Sometimes apply or uh, you know, celebrating see a poor man. Right? That's apply for sure. We need to always be charitable, compassionate. But how you can build a culture with somebody don't even agree with the, the same God? Or somewhere and just literally his soul, his body in the healing, right? In the accommodation. He don't actually have the luxury to understand God's word, God's vision, God's requirement for culture set up. He don't even have a, his um, head out the drowning water from humanity. Amen? Hallelujah. So I recommend to you to understand the neighbor as a kinsman, as a one who like your brother. Amen? In God's inheritance, right? Like Abraham had different land you dwell that's your neighbor am i basically your kings my your brothers am i their family you don't worry about the university need you don't worry about whether you get lost in the world or not you all belong to god you all love god that's precondition the first one am i the first one who is your neighbor those who love god with all their heart all their soul all their mind that's your neighbor am i if they can't do that, can they be their neighbor in this context? Just talking. You see, we does as a scripture very easily to feed our own ideas. But that's what not Jesus said. That's not God. God never required us to do that. Amen? Hallelujah. For sure you can't invite out everybody in the world. Can you? <laughs> can you see every soul? No. But you are supposed to de-wet this ideal life, you will, spiritual fuel life with the one God has given to you, am I? Hallelujah. With the love that flourishing in your midst of you, how you love God, how you love one another, this become a light, this become a sword, this become a, a, a engine power, amen? Hallelujah. To draw others in. That's Old Testament prophecy, by the way. Everyone going to glean on the hem of a, the garment of a Jew, say, let us learn God because we know God is with you, am I? So, make it sense to you? This is the same fulfillment. Now, see in 40 said, so all the law and the prophets on, on these two commandments. No, the honey the word is not the we think honey is. The honey word actually, turn with me to Isaiah 22, 22. This is all of God's government, okay? Think about all this from a governmental array. You are a governor, you are a king. You are going to use the law, or the priest use the law. Begin to instruct a people. Amen? That's where you, Jesus came from. Am I? That's when Jesus enlisted the disciples to be, to, to be partnered with him in this kind of thinking. Am I? Hallelujah. Do you understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Where is it? Isaiah 22, 22. Okay. So I invite you to look at the Bible differently. You will learn the Bible differently from me. Okay? And it's easy. It's, it's literally what I meant. You know? Okay? Unfortunately, man has 
apply their complications, refuse to come to the simple ways of learning the Bible. 22-22, we'll see this scripture actually is about this. Okay. You can see this in 20 now, talking about different characters. You got to be a, a king and a priest, says then king, to receive these teachings, okay? You got to be learned to be a son of God, then begin to preach the teachings. His teaching is not uh, towards the sinner, merely. Okay, so a lost soul in the world, for sure he cared about it. For sure he had to do the re restoration of that soul back to his, his brotherhood, his family. But that's not where he came from when he do, do discipleship. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. That's why we emphasize, he treated you, call you to be sons of the Heavenly Father, so like he was, am I? He is, and he is to come, am I? So, now look at this. In 20, in that day was some of my servant, Elikim, son of Hekel, close him, and uh, he will be what? He will be a father, and the authority to him, again, the authority to do with a, his a fatherhood, or representing a culture, if you will, able to build a culture, if you will. What the authority given? Merely for signs wonder? To dismiss the devil? No, it's representing God to build a culture. That's a genuine authority power. That's the power Jesus said, say, you don't know the scripture, know the power of God. You don't understand why God gave you grace. For what? To build a people, to, 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 to set apart for God a people. Amen? Hallelujah. And okay, let's go on. So he will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the halt of Judah. You know Judah is a leading tribe, am I? A tribe of leadership. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. That's obviously a governmental entrustment. And what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one opens. Can you guys remember this where it came from? In Jesus' own wording. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Matthew 15. I will teach you the Bible differently, okay? Sorry. <laughs> Matthew 15, is that 15 or not somewhere? I think it's a 15. Hold on. It's not Matthew 15. Um, no. Yeah, yeah, Matthew 16, sorry. So Peter confessed, here said, in 16, 16 said, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the naughty one. The song of the living God, very important relationship. He finally, after all this time, okay, remember, start with the, the chapter with this one visit. Until this time, Peter had heard all the message, and, but they have never really understood. But this time, he had divine revelation. Why? Jesus said so. And he said, Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by Man, man's intellect, man's understanding, man's interpretation of the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we say that? Amen. Peter was pretty anointed. He was casting demons out by this time. Okay? <laughs> but you don't understand the relationship. That's why I tried to map out for you. It said, by, but by my Father in heaven. So he heard Jesus. He had moved the Holy Spirit. But the father-son relationship has not been opened up for Peter yet. Hallelujah. But by my father in heaven, I tell you, you are Peter. He changed his name. And you'll be rock upon which I will be. Just the rock here, the word very important is not Petra, Peter's name, but the big rock, okay? A, a better rock upon which you can build a solid house or the temple, rather. So that rock is, com in Hebrew, the word composed by two words in combined together, father and the son. The rock itself means the father and the son together in Hebrew. Can okay, you do a word study? So what in 16, the land part, con Peter confessed, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus said, hey, good for you, Peter. I'm glad that finally the father went to engage on the living son. And upon this rock, Upon this foundation, this living relationship, I'll build our church. And man, you're the first fruits with the little rock going to build on this living stones. Am I? Remember Peter's word in 1 Peter? 
Well, well you're shocked. So let me with it. Your dad's supposed to tease these things. But the first Peter, let's see. See, Peter himself, am I? His name was changed. He understood what that means more than anyone else, I guess. According to Peter's own words, he's understanding. So don't think these things are outlandish, okay? These are the gospel. This is the content of Jesus' discipleship and, and tenure discipleship with the early apostles. This is First Peter in two chapter now said in four. As you come to him, the living stone, son of the living God, rejected by men, but chosen by God, preached to him, you also like a living stone. Petra. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, being built into a spiritual house. What a house? Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. No storm is going to touch trouble it because of build of my teachings. Okay? Build of my teachings. It be like a spiritual house. So the spiritual house, built by spiritual stones, spiritual sounds rather, to be a holy priesthood. Hallelujah. In more than the house, the temple, you as a priesthood. Amen. Hallelujah. So that means you have this environment or this kingdom. You also as a citizen live the life thereof. Fulfill your duty thereof. Offering spiritual sacrifices, that's the services, acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. In the scripture says, see, I lay a stone in that. We mentioned the early days. This is a quotation from a, um, Isaiah 8, talking to discipleship, and right? Sonship. I lay a stone in Zion, and choosing a precious cornerstone. The one who trusts him will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. Then the next one is a quotation from Psalm 118. said, the stone, the build reject, will become the capstone. And the stone will cause man to stumble, or rock make me the fall. They stumble because they disobey the message. Now, recently there are, I think Justin has a, a picture of a, a stone go to be a boy there, and uh, you were there, am I? Yelin and Noah was there, am I? Try to crash on this mountain and being shattered rather, amen, hallelujah. Thinking about what that stone is. That is a church, man's church. Grew, grew, crushed all other kingdoms, subdue all other religions even try to. Amen. Hallelujah. Devour every nation, if you will, as a religion at least. And try to make yourself represent God. God said, you know, you're a freak. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you think I'm a Christian? I'm Christian unnecessarily? Or what God says that it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Even scripture and prophesy the spirit of Babylon going to build a false religion. Amen. In trap many people. Now that being said, I want to continue. So Jesus tried to restore the essence of the law. We see it. And the contagion of what? One relationship vertical, man with God. God, but not this remote God. God most high anymore. God your father. He built, restored this father-son relationship. Whereas he built his people upon this rock as a church. Amen. As the church. And the church more than this any good charitable religious system out there or organization there is a governmental array am i representing the law representing the priesthood amen hallelujah represent his covenant the second is a re under this governance under this administration of priesthood this embodiment or execution practice this law this covenant if you will the meant to produce a people am i with understanding amen the heart Mind, the soul will be united with God as one. Amen. Hallelujah. In that, they become a solid people as a community. Am I? Each one is a kingdom. You are now become a members. Come with me to second, second, second chapter Ephesians. Ephesians. So this is Peter, Jesus understanding. Now we come to Paul. Okay, so. So how you build this hall? Jesus started with uh, Matthew 5 to 7. Okay, so turn with me to 2nd chapter, Ephesians. 
Brother Sorrow 18 said, in, in 17, let's do this. This is the king and preach the peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who are near, from the Jews, the Gentiles. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit, through the Son. We have access to her. He didn't see a heavenly realm. He didn't see angels. He didn't see heavenly hosts. He said to a person, Amen. To God the Father. Am I? Hallelujah. Through what? By one spirit. Hallelujah. One heart, one soul, one mind. The spirit expressed in you. Three capacities, right? Three persons, rather. Three personal expressions. Amen. Hallelujah. Constantly, as a result. Amen. As a result. So who is your neighbor? If you don't love God, don't understand scriptures, so don't know the power of God, don't yield to it. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, going to be your neighbor? Jesus said, no. They are sons of the devil. That's Jesus' qualification. It's very hard. <laughs> Sorry. But you need to make the division who is your true neighbor. Amen? To practice the essence of the spirit of the law to become that informed, enlightened people. Amen? Rather than misuse the scriptures, abuse God's power and entrustment. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens. Foreigners is different citizenship. We are to a different kingdom. Aliens is a different race, different family. So that's what the Paul understood. Okay? So you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people, a uh, kingdom concept, member of God's hold, hold, a family concept. And this is how you build up. Build on the foundation of the apostle, the prophets, with Christ Jesus, him as a chief cornerstone. So we just came from Peter's exposition this. Of a Jesus concept, am I? How to build this house. So the whole chapter from 5 to 7 landed to build a spiritual house on the foundation of his teaching or his covenant. Now let's go on. So, join together, right to become a holy temple in the Lord. You are more than a temple, you are also the priesthood, am I? You are this membership, in members in this household. In Him, you are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. So you are more than individually a spiritual being, through your sonship in Christ Jesus. You are together the fellowship and uh, Aligned together to be one body. Hallelujah. The same book. Actually, expand this. Turn to four chapter. The same book. Fourteen. Four fourteen. Said so then you are no longer be infants. You see, start there. How you see the infants? You are unstable. You are not built up yet. You are not solid yet. Tossed back forth by the waves. That's what Paul interpretation of Jesus is saying and teaching them. Right? Waves come. Wheels comes, what kind of foundation you have, what kind of house you build. So this is basically those are false doctrines. Pharisees, Pharisees represent those wheels, right? So false teachings. And blown here there by everyone teachings, by the cunning and crafting man in their deceitful scheming. What do you think you're talking about? He's not even talking about the Caesar, the Gentile uh, philosophies, am I? He was talking about God's Jewish people those days, their ways of interpreting scripture, apply their governmental entrustment. So, anyway, instead of speaking the truth in love, speaking that is bonding, explaining, teaching, actually, in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ, the knotted one. In him, from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and build itself up. Build itself up in love. Each part does its work. So every member is supposed to live in this house. Everyone spiritual member, but the spiritual body, whose head is Christ Jesus, you being his spiritual church. Am I? The church has amazing enforcement. I want to continue to identify. This is just not any church in any 
regard. The same book, turn with me to the same book. Ephesians, write down this guy. You're going to continue meditating on this, hopefully, in three chapters about the church. In the three ten said, his intent, God's purpose, God's goal, God's working uh, end, he's working for something, was that now through the church, through this church that's described here, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers, authorities in the heaven. Ruler authorities, what are they? The angelic construct, am I? angelic realms. According to his internal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ is our Lord. And in him, and through faith in him. What a faith? A personal faith? I can be healed? Or this faith? It's one faith, am I? A very particular faith. You may approach God, approach God, well, he's your father, am I? You have full access to the father through one spirit. Approach God with freedom, confidence. So approach God, Moses, any God, he is your father, you actually here as an heir, as a son, amen, through your life of sonship in Christ Jesus. Anyway, go on, turn with me to fight as a match now, we're going to back to this, okay, so last time we talked about Jesus Christ gave an ideal of life, he said, bless are you, we mentioned the word bless, it actually means make you happy. Make you feel, achieve something, fulfill something. Make you feel delighted, okay, joyful. The word deeply relate to the word called the pleasure. Is God good pleasure later on, Jesus said, Paul said, many others said, God good pleasure, God pleasure, God delight. He wants this to be done and he zealously uh, pursue it, working at it. So you are, so are you. Blessed when you pursue, seek, ask, and uh, knock on these things. When you receive these things, then you can become the high desire of your life. You know, Jesus said, this is your treasure. This is your treasure. Seek these treasures. So when you found it, you'll be satisfied. So what is he saying? He's not talking about, okay, if certain happened, thing happened, amen, hallelujah. If you're blessed, certain things going to happen to you. He rather said, certain things that happen will make you feel happy, make you feel fulfilled. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not saying that when you do something, then something gonna happen and make you happy. Is that making sense to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see. Um, Esther have a wonderful friend. Don't see each other for a long time. Am right? So, you guys just said, hey, let's let's plan to meet each other in the coffee shop. Have have a good time to catch up. Am right? So, the moment you guys see in the coffee shop, do nothing to chat to catch up. Am right? Aren't you happy? Do you plan so 10 years ago, uh, down the road, our friendship is going to go this or that? Let's think about it, what is going to happen, this or that, doing things that. No, you don't think about that, am I? You just cherish that moment that your friend is before you in the coffee shop, am I? Just spend time with you. Am I making sense to you? Not the thing related. Just have your friend before you, you know, try to catch up. Amen? Hallelujah. Making sense to you? All your planning is eagerly ready yourself, you know, see how money we had to travel, get the schedule right, try to arrange everybody how to meet together at that moment. Am I? Make it sense to you? You know, so, yeah. And uh, that's what you care for. Now, here is, if you think along this line, you understand what this Jesus said. He said, bless are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God. He said, you are the poor in the spirit. Oh, bless are you. Look, you got, you, you got a, a a, a spirit that is poor and humble and searching for God, am I? So, you know, you're blessed. For sure, God will do something about that heart, religion and the heart, but that's not the point, am I? The point is you have a, a spirit of poverty, spirit ready to worship God, am I? You don't hold yourself and something. You don't allow the world to dictate you you are something, am I? You're poor with that. You're done with that. He said, God, tell me who I am. I'm willing to hear from you, to be the one you made me to be. And then, hallelujah. Those who mourn for them will be comforted. Not that way. Come with it after that. There might be a condition in there. You mourn, but you will be comforted. The key is there, what? Is to go through that. Am I? Hallelujah. He didn't say, you're not going to mourn. You're not going <laughs> to, you know, rather you mourn, 
but you will be comforted. That experience itself is a blessed experience. Hallelujah. From how many moments in life is ever get comforted? But God said, I will heal you. I'm going to make this thing, uh, mean something to you. Am I making sense to you? Hallelujah. Blessed meek, for they inherit the earth. So this one is actually talking about the, the meek. I mean, the heart is meek. I'm meek. When you maintain the meek heart, he will what? He will give you the kingdom. Give you the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now that word is interesting key word there. Let's use this own word to interpret it. It said, <coughs> where is it? I don't quite remember. But so somewhere he's talking about, come on to me. For I am meek and um, humble in heart. Where is that one? Somebody help me. Which one? Um, it's, it's a meek in heart. Said, Come to me, basically, you know, for I am meek and lowly in heart. I don't quite remember. So the meek there, well, I'll try to explain meek is different than poor in the spirit, right? Meek is the one that has something. He just disciplines himself. Um, um, yield to a higher principle that he's not going to do the thing he's capable of doing for a greater purpose. Am I? Let's see. Uh, Naomi is a fully evil. Maybe you have thousand dollars saved up. But you can have you know, some other friend come around and say, like, why don't you buy this? Don't do this. Spend all that. Am I? You know, in a way that. They, Leave you foolish or non-productive, right? You'd rather say, no, I'm not going to use that for that purposes. I'm going to see it and use it for the right purpose, am I? So, make it sense to you? That's basically by essence of meekness because you can do that thing, but you refuse to do it because you yield to a higher purpose to use your resources. Make it sense to you? You know, a king can fully punish somebody, you know, to put him in jail or do whatever he's... Uh, his uh, emotions, the spur of the moment, dig to him. But he don't do that. He said, you know, I'm not going to use my emotions. I'm going to follow justice. I'm going to follow even compassion, right? So forgiveness even to deal with this uh, terrible character <laughs> who offended me. And he, he don't abuse his power in a sense. That is a d clear definition of meekness, okay? I make sense to you? Uh, Jesus can call out angels from heaven to destroy a lot of evil people. He did not do it, right? So. He said that, you know, so that is a perfect expression. He's making this. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? What? What are you laughing at? What are you teaching him around? So what's the, no, what's the joke? No. I want to know. So. No. So, something very important, obviously. So. Laughable. I want to know. Hmm? Uh -huh. He's pinching. I'm not That's laughing. Pinching. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Peaches are funny, so. Peachy hard, so. Okay. Okay, let's see. So merciful, you'll be shown mercy, hallelujah. What is it God is basically, Jesus said, you guys, you don't, may don't feel a ready candidate for my teachings. You may mourning, you may feel poor, you may feel lowly, you may feel, you have a lot of burdens, you may, you know, just have a good intent, but don't feel really uh, have been paid back for anything. He began to describe different hard content about the audience is facing, right? He said, hey guys, don't really worry about those things, you know. Actually, you feel those things, you have those things. It's good candidate for my kingdom teaching, am I right? I'm going to teach you a new way of life. Then the last one, I wanted to expound the nine one, called one, the peacemakers. They were called sons of God. That's a very important one. Now, the peacemakers, oftentimes, we think peacemakers didn't pick a fight, am I right? Try to simmer down and query a, a, a quarrel, whatever, you know? So that's what not Jesus actually said. Peacemaker in those days is more about a culturally way of doing things. Like an elder, you know, to judge the affairs of a community come there to make a peace, am I right? So somebody volunteer for the community, basically. And then take on burdens more than just himself. He wanted the community, a group of people, to have peace together. Am I making sense to you? That obviously is a posture for leadership, posture for 
service to greater uh, group people. Am I? He's not self-centered, merely has his own well-being. This is a very important one because God's teaching, this is teaching oftentimes, has less to do with our, our personal well-being, our personal holiness and piety, but rather for God's heart as a son to claim a people. And you be an instrument on a priest for this end. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to have a heart more than for personal affairs, for people around you. You have an idea of what people are supposed to look like. Then from that point, you begin to have God to enlist the ready candidates for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Making sense to you? So God, in a sense, he said, hey, here's a piece, an idea, a piece, a light piece. I don't want the people to want peace to, to be with me. I cannot teach people to want peace, am I? They said the war is good, you know, so bully others are good. <laughs> what do I have to teach of that? But I wanted to go to the ones who want peace. Amen? Hallelujah. Make it sense to you? Very important now. Because many Christians would take on troublesome characters as if they had to do a miracle for them. But they will forfeit the ones actually is doing the thing of the Lord. They're not willing really wasting their lives. I see the miserable end and misguidance in this in many ministry, many good godly God servants. They're never able to build the God's world wanted for God's people's God. But they all want to save a lost soul. I'm not saying you don't have a compassion for a lost soul, but you forfeit the fundamental purpose and, and the fundamental Ways of how to disciple God's kingdom. Amen? You don't know how anything yourself can offer. Amen? Hallelujah. You just basically preach them a, a pipe dream in a sense. You know? So their life cannot be fundamentally changed if that life with relation, you know, dynamic community dynamic, is not real for them. Am I making sense to you? You know? So. Well, maybe over the board. Let's see Noah is a father. I can preach him all day long and learn all the things about being a good father. But now he become a father. Amen? Hallelujah. And I have a broken family. <laughs> I'm not a good father because my child or the friends around me. But I know all about what it means to be a good father. Am I able to teach Noah what it means to be a good father? I better be quiet and learn from Noah. <laughs> Am I? Not about the ministers. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> as a Pharisee, Pharisaic steward, drive people crazy. <laughs> they think because they mentally know they can do it. Far from the truth, far from the truth. Hallelujah. I'm a little bit sharp on that one, but it's easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> where we were in James, turn with me, James, second chapter. So I'll give you an overview with the greater context, Jesus teaching and the apostle teachings. Talking about the importance of the chapter, okay? I'll zoom more in about how to understand the scriptures without legalistic intellectual point of view. I continue to be sharp, I even being very critical about the inference of modern Christianity. I'm hallelujah, hallelujah. I pinpoint it with certain things because those people is very familiar to your environment. You will pick up their teaching everywhere and you will think they actually know what they are talking about. Now try to be hard, <laughs> but we need to be very, very alert. They have good things to offer. It's like a Pharisees and they have good things to offer by the law. But they can't practice it. So you need to be solely aware the teaching of Jesus Christ may be different than their orientation and their goals. So it's us as the people who want to recover the thing, am I? Hallelujah. James? Where's the James? Okay. Book of James. I think James is before Peter, yeah, that's right. Let's see the wisdom from above would look like, okay? So, talk about the wisdom from below and wisdom from above. But in the 17, that is three chapters, James 17. Three chapters, 17. Naomi, can you read it for us? 17, three chapter, 17. Loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, and charitable, impartial, impartial, impartial and sincere. Mm. 
Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And the key word is righteousness, am I? Peacemakers in this light have to do with wisdom, am I? Hallelujah. Wisdom and wisdom sow labor on this world, wisdom, as a farmer would do, weeding for the harvest of peace. Obviously, we're talking about a community of people, I mean, in relation dynamic, we're merely, merely a personal endeavor. Am I? So, making sense to you? For sure, peace, love, righteousness, all those words are relational concepts. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. All relational concepts. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. I mean, somebody said, I know love. Let me see. I'm righteous. Let me see how you deal with the affair. <laughs> it's your son. But it's done wrong. And then somewhere you don't know, a stranger. What do you deal with it? Are you righteous? Few able to deal fairly, right? So, sorry. Few able to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Understand. You know. Then with the love in the back end. Amen. How you express your love son? Now I think it's your love son. It's a, your son never should do love wrong. To begin with, do better than a stranger. The example of the stranger. That's your love. Obviously, when you try to interfere with the situation to be unjust, to, to partiality to your son, you are already a crooked father to begin with. Don't you know that? You are the source of your son's evil. To crooked beings, leading crooked beings. You can you build a stronghold? Amen, hallelujah. And the, 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 the father will wrongly love the son, said, hey, you know, that's my love. Justify his crookedness. Okay. And I know how God love. You crook father. Have you think about the responsibility and misled your son to begin with, repent, and maybe use this occasion to change fundamentally your son and yourself. Say, hey, my God, this is a wake up call. Now we are called into a, a bad predicament. Oh God, look at these things. Repent, am I? Use the occasion and repentance. Or rather than being crude and minister for justice. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what do Christians do today? That's very relevant. It's a far fetching example. What do Christians do today? Amen. Hallelujah. We justify our wicked practices. Am I? Our, amen. The standard of righteousness, standard of goodness is already. Forfeited, or we or we tailored away, and we still blame others, am right? Judge things unfairly, blame others for the things that go, going on, am right? Making sense to you? We blame the world for the falling of our children, right? So, really? You be yourself is a problem. It's so much talking. <laughs> Yelin grew up a little bit, <laughs> understand the principle, <laughs> you know. I hope your parents will never do that to you. Amen, hallelujah. Are you as a parent or as a teacher, as God, will never do that. Amen, hallelujah. We all for sure. We all for sure. God forbid we say we can be 100%. Amen, hallelujah. But we don't let the standard down. You know, we don't pervert the way. We don't mislead the whole um, evaluation, right? So, making sense to you? It's good, it's good. It's, it's a clay, it's clay. You know, so don't. Mixture, don't confuse. In that, I'm going to ramp up. Last one, however, let's read this a little bit. It's not good notes, but I want you to be encouraged. Last one is a 511. It said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely see all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. That's very interesting. Rejoice and be glad. Super happy. Like a Peter and you know, like a Paul and Salas, am I shouting, you know? <laughs> for they were delivered from evil. All in the middle of evil. But they were suffering for Christ. Because greed is your reward in heaven. So there is a reward. If a Christian someone tell you there's no reward, he's wrong. <laughs> Jesus said that. So in the same way, the persecuted prophets, oh why you basically in a good rack, you know, so you know, terrible to look bad. Now, with this portion of scripture, <laughs> I do want to give a reference. This is the own teachings. That I can in John the Gospel. This last one is worse to meditate on. Because in real life, 
because of God, you will be persecuted. Inevitably, everyone who stands for God will be persecuted. Okay? So, this is a good place to meditate how we deal with these things when it comes. Actually, it's in the Last Supper. This is a teaching to the disciples that are going to be in the 15th chapter. He taught the disciples, wine the branches, and then he taught this very thing. Being a son of God, being a priest, being one sent into the world, you will be persecuted. That is going to be 18th chapter to the end. You must testify, said in the end, for you have been with me from the beginning. More than not intimidated by the trial, the persecution of the world, you will continue the testimony as a true disciple. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, in 18, it gives similarities when we wrap it up. If the world hates you, keep your mind. It hated me. 15, 18? 15, 18. I'm sorry. Yeah, 15, sorry. Yeah. 15, 18, yeah. He, he hated me at first, and you don't belong to the world, those kind of things. So you can uh, encourage you to read it. So the teaching here is more condensed because the best place for us to really give an overview of these teachings, okay? So you, if you look at this, it's like an ally, you know? Constitution indeed, in a certain way. But it's, it's like the, the whole vision of Christ's teaching is mapped up. The Old New Testament is uh, centered around this teaching. So with that, let's wrap it up. Mm -hmm.